Welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Milana. Today I'm going to do a video that is a little bit different than I normally do. I usually do baking and gardening tips, cooking tips, canning, all that type of thing. I'm going to show you a video of my other passion which is antiques and thrifting. I haven't been able to thrift geez, for about a month I think. Here in Ontario we're in lockdown so I haven't been able to go to any of my favorite thrift shops or auctions. I'm kind of feeling it so I thought it would be kind of fun if I was to do a thrift haul today. Um, if you follow me on Instagram I do thrift hauls on my stories and I thought it'd be kind of neat to bring it to YouTube. So if you enjoy antiques and thrifting, stick around. I'm just going to use my chair as my prop up here for my pictures. This upholstery is vintage and I love it. I don't know what year this is from, maybe the 50s or 40s or 50s maybe. Um, but anyway, I got this cross stitch pattern here and I had no idea what stop horse meant. But my friend Caroline, she is from the Netherlands and she told me that this cross stitch actually depicts the people of a little village in the Netherlands called Stophorst and it's a very religious village and the residents of this town they most of them still dress in their traditional costume so I thought that was quite interesting so that's what that is I can show you up close here some of the work that's been put into that um, now I don't love the frame but I love the work in it and it was 79 cents if you can believe that so next I picked up this at the same thrift shop that I got the stop horse cross stitch pattern and this is needlepoint and it is beautiful look at the frame I actually love the wooden frame on it it says 1890 across there but then there's another date 1966 so I don't know if this was done in 1890 and then they framed it in 1966 or if it's just a pattern they did in 1966 so I hope it's from 1890 actually <laughs> I think it might be 1966 either way it's absolutely beautiful I'll get a close-up in a minute and this was two dollars and 49 cents so of course I had to bring this home. And this so this is a close up of it. There is a little stain right here. I tried to get that out, but I didn't want to ruin it. But you can just see the work. Just absolutely beautiful. I really love the color scheme that they used. The pattern is pretty, everything. So $2.49 for that. So after I left the Mission Thrift Store, that was February 19th, I know this, I keep this stuff documented because <laughs> I don't know why, I just love it. So I left that store and went to our local little thrift shop in the village, just not far from me. And there I found this book. So as soon as I saw the paper, I knew it was going to be something really good. It is one of the Foxfire books and the first thing I read was hog dressing, log cabin building, mountain crafts and foods, planting by the signs, snake lore, hunting tales, faith healing, moon shining, and other affairs of plain living. As soon as I saw that, I thought, you had me at hog dressing. So <laughs> I picked that up and that was 25 cents. There's sections all about wood, how to make a split rail fence, tools and skills. how to build a log cabin. Chimney building, making a basket out of oak, white oak splits. Look at the hands, look at the handiwork. I mean, who couldn't learn from these masters that this is, was their way of life. This is how I love to learn from people that actually did it. and did it well. These books are just, look at the quilts too. I would give anything to be at that quilting bee. Imagine what you would learn. Here's one. Moonshining as a fine art. I mean, where are you gonna find that in another book? Look at that, salt of the earth right there. 
The Foxfire book series started as a magazine in 1967, and I believe they were so popular that they start, started to do the collections from these magazines and put them into a book and made it into a series. So this particular one is from 1972. There's a dedication at the front of this book that I'd like to read. It's, it says it all for me, the reason why I go to thrift shops and save handmade things in auctions and why I like to learn about the history of these treasures. This book is dedicated to the people of these mountains in the hope that through it, some portion of their wisdom, ingenuity, and individuality will remain long after them to touch us all. That is everything right there. Also at the Mission Thrift Shop, I went into the tool section, which I always do. I love vintage tools. I love the fact that years ago, things were made with such amazing craftsmanship and there was no power tools. It was done by hand, so that's why I always check there. But I got these vintage pruning shears. They were $1.99. I just have to use some steel wool to get some of the rust off. But I mean, look how long these have lasted. Now on March 4th, I went to a little hospital charity thrift shop and I found this little tin right here. It was $1.75 and it is actually Queen Elizabeth II. It's June 2nd, 1953 and it's a souvenir of her coronation. This painting is a very famous painting by John Constable and this is called Willie Lott's Cottage and he was a tenant farmer from 1761 till 1849 and apparently he only stayed four nights away from his little cottage his entire life and this cottage is in Flatford, Suffolk, England and these were made by James Pasco Limited at Mitcham, England. It's a fine sweet company and I thought that it would be really cute to use in my sewing room for buttons or pins and this tin here I got this from my little local thrift shop. It was five dollars and this portrait here was painted by Sir Joshua Reynolds and it's called Simplicity and I can't find anything about it about what it was but I have my suspicions that it was a Thornton's Toffee sweet tin so if anybody knows I can't find anything on the back of it but I thought that would be really really cute for my buttons and pins down in my sewing room that's what both of these boxes I purchased them for. From the same shop, I got these placemats. I don't usually love hard placemats, but I love the English fox hunting scenes on these ones that I got. The same day that I picked up the placemats, I also got this little crock. Now, I don't, it's not old, but it's from a really nice shop. It's called Fortnum & Mason Limited, and there was cheese in this, I guess. It's got a little, a little lid on it. I thought that that would be cute to put tea bags in, and it was $1.75. Now, March 18th, I went to the Salvation Army. And I got a couple of treasures there. I'll turn you around and show you what I got. I picked up this brass lamp. It kind of reminded me of something that you would see in an old library. So I really liked it. And it's really cute for reading in the corner here. I paid $6 for that. The same day that I went to the hospital charity shop and got the placemats and the little cheese crock, I picked up this toaster. And it's the same toaster that my aunt and uncle have at their farm and I won't let them get rid of it because I love it. So now I have one of my own. So this toaster, I believe is from the forties. It's from the Bursted Manufacturing Company and made in Oakville, Ontario. And with these toasters, it's, it gets very hot. So that's why they've got these wooden, little wooden handles. And what you have to do is you have to actually smell when your toast is ready. If you see smoke coming up, you're going to know that toast is burning. So you have to kind of, can't just set it and forget it type of toaster. So and this is not a toaster you want to leave plugged in. This is a toaster that you want to be careful with, but I got it just for tradition's sake. And when I make toast with it, I'm here watching it 
it's quite wide too so it's it's actually good for bagels and i like the fact that things don't get stuck you can just have to open the door and pull it out and like i said it is two-sided for your convenience when i went to the salvation army there's another little charity shop around the corner and i picked up these really cute allspice containers they are made in japan and they have lids obviously they were a dollar each no, excuse me, they were $2 each. I know they say allspice, but I thought I would use these for little bookends on either side of my craft and my sewing books and fill them with spools of thread or other little notions that are kind of stray. Now this tea set, I was at the Salvation Army and I saw this on the shelf and I know the guy that works there. He's a volunteer. Of course I know him because I'm there all the time. <laughs> Anyway, I said, George, I need to see that tea set, please. That was, I couldn't believe I saw it. It was on the shelf behind the cache and he brought it down and it was tarnished. And he said, that's gonna be a lot of cleaning, but brought it home and shined it all up. And it's, it's so lovely. The stamp on the bottom of my tea and coffee service set, it says William A. Rogers. I did a little bit of research uh, when, I, when I bought the set and I found that William A. Rogers took over from James A. Watt and he founded the Toronto Silver Plate Company in 1882. He built his manufacturing building in 1882 on King Street in Toronto and they were the first company in all of Canada to produce silver plating or silver plated products. So William A. Rogers took over in 1913 and then Oneida took over from him in 1929. So my set is dated somewhere between 1913 and 1929, and I got it for $16. No tax. I was so excited. Um, I'm really gonna Downton Abbey this whole situation up here. So that's it for today's video. I have so many more that I can share with you. I just get so excited when I go on my little treasure hunts. Um, I hope I wasn't too braggy. My husband said, don't be too braggy about your, your things that you get. And I think I held back pretty good. I, I hope I did anyway. I just get so excited. So if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, and I'll see you again next time.